I am Assistant Professor Urmi Shah from ITICT Department of LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we will be discussing about the fourth unit that is Telephone Networks of Telecommunication Engineering. This is chapter number four of Telecommunication Engineering. In this we are going to cover the following topics. The topics include subscriber local loop system, components of loop, factors limiting subscriber loop length and standard telephone set and local loop. So these are the topics that we are going to cover in this session. Basically the subscriber local loop system is the first topic in this unit. So the topic says that the telephones are connected to the local switching office. The two wire twisted pair connection between telephone and central office is called local loop. The local loop is also called as subscriber loop. So this is how the name subscriber loop given because the telephone offices are connected via local switching office and the telephone and the central office looping structure is called local loop and this local loop is used by the subscribers who are using telephone networks. So the name is subscriber loop. By using these two wires full duplex communication with dialing and signaling is possible. Full duplex in the term that sender can send the data to receiver and receiver can also send the data to the sender. So that is a two way communication from one point to second point and from second point to first point. So that communication is a full duplex communication. Adding further, the loop is a metallic transmission line which consists of a pair of wires. The local loop is main cause of attenuation and phase distortion in telephone circuit. The transmission characteristics of a cable pair is determined by wire diameter, conductor spacing, dielectric constant and the conductivity of wire. So these are the characteristics of a cable or a wire which is used for connecting of two telephone networks which is a part of subscriber loop system. So as you can see the diagram over here this is the electrical model of transmission line. Basically in this model the parameters included are R, L, C, G resistance, inductance, capacitance and conductance. R is the resistance L is the inductance, C is the capacitance and G is the conductance. So the inductance, capacitance and resistance are uniformly distributed along the length of a transmission line. These parameters are known as distributed parameters and these are the parameters of transmission line. Now Coming to the next topic that is components of a loop. Following are the components or the major block units of a looping system. First is feeder cable which is going to feed the data or the information from one block to the another block. The another is service area interface that is SAI. Third one is distribution cable which is going to distribute the data to various blocks. Fourth is the subscriber network interface SNI. Fifth is drop wire. Sixth is aerial. And seventh is distribution cable and drop wire cross connect point. So following are the components of a loop system. Basically the factors limiting subscriber loop length are signaling limit and attenuation limit. In signaling limit, the DC signaling 
is used for subscriber lines such as dial pulses, call request, address signal, answer and off hook signals. The attenuation limits over here arises from the AC response of the loop. Following techniques are used for ensuring of the quality of reception at the subscriber side. So we can have the avoidance of the noisy or unwanted signal by ensuring the quality of assurance by using the following cables or the, by using the following telephone sets at the subscriber side. So the first one is using large diameter wire. Large diameter wire will avoid lossage of signal. Second is use of equalized telephone set. Equalized telephone set will give a good range of connectivity. Third is use of higher supply voltage. Supply voltage higher is required otherwise there will be a droppage of call at the places where there will be low voltage supply. Use of loading coils. This is also required for a better communication between two link points. So following are the things which has to be taken care to ensure good quality reception on subscriber side. So the first factor was signaling limit that has to be associated with the call request, addressing of signal, answering of signal, hookup of signal and dialing pulses of signal. Second point is the attenuation limits where we have to take care that there is no lossage of signal or no signal degradation due to the following issues. So basically this is the diagram of standard telephone set and a local loop. These are the components associated which we have already written as a part of component of looping system. So basically diode, RLC parameters, transformer circuitry, looping switching, all circuitry uh, elements are involved in the standard telephone set as a part of local loop system. Moving ahead. In this system, which we saw in the previous slide, the description says that as shown in figure, the DC voltage of minus 48 volt is given to twisted pair wire from central office. So from central office to this telephone network, minus 48 volt supply is coming, which can switch on the local loop system. The resistance of local loop is typically 1K to 1.8 kilo ohm. The second point is ringer. In ringer, it is an electromagnetic coil that operates on voltage from central office. When the call party line is obtained, the central office sends a ringing current that is also called as telephone set. The third parameter is the transmitter parameter. It is a microphone that translates acoustical vibrations into changing resistance. The variable resistance produces variations in the current of local loop. So following are the blocks of standard telephone system which we have sawn in the previous diagram that is this is the standard telephone set system. Basically the ringer is a coil which is operated on the voltage that is minus 48 volt which is directly coming from the central office and the party line is obtained such that the central office is going to send the ringing current to the telephone set. The third one is transmitter. Transmitter is going to pass on the signal from one block to the receiver block while having some acoustical vibrations or changing resistance. 
So the variable resistance which is produced during vibrations or variations is affecting the current of local loop system. So that is the role of transmitter block. Now in a system wherever you have a transmitter or the sender unit, the same way you will have the receiver unit. So earpiece or the receiver, the microphone in which you are hearing the signal coming from one end to your end. That is the earpiece or the receiver. It is a permanent magnet type speaker which can convert electrical pulses coming down the telephone lines into the vibrations so that human being can listen the signals. So that is earpiece or receiver. It is a kind of speaker which is going to listen or which is going to receive the electrical pulses and that speaker which is able to receive the electrical pulses is going to convert that electrical signals into the sound signal or the audio signal which our ear can listen and understand. So that is the role of earpiece or receiver. So in the telephone set or a local loop system we have various transmission line parameters that is R, L, C, G. Then we have diode circuitry, we have transmitter and receiver block, various switching unit, there is a ringer coil and there is a power supply unit which is coming from direct central office that is minus 48 volt. So these are the various blocks of standard telephone system which includes power supply, then secondly ringer coil, thirdly transmitter that is going to send the signal and fourthly the earpiece or receiver which is going to have reception of signals. Moving forward, in this standard telephone set we will be having the understanding about various switching techniques and what are the available networks for connecting or for the signal reception and transmission that we will be covering in the upcoming next session. For today's session following are the references for the topics that we have covered today. In the next session we will be continuing with the topics which we have left today that is subscriber loop system, telephonic networks, how the connection can be established from subscriber to the user or the dedicated receiver, what are the different protocols, how the signaling are done between the current user and the dialed user. So that we will be discussing in this unit that is the fourth unit of telecommunication engineering that is telephone networks. Further after telephone networks we will be discussing about data networks that is fifth unit of telecommunication engineering in that we will be having the various understanding about the topologies that is LEN, WEN, WEN, STAR, BUS such topologies and how the connection of one block to other block is done via various topologies or various architectures for data communication that we will be discussing in the fourth and fifth unit. And finally in the sixth unit we will be concluding with the different types of signal. So this is the content left for the telecommunication course. Up till now we have finished three units and three more units are left for this subject. So this is the fourth unit telephone network. Thank you very much for watching this session. In the upcoming session we will be continuing with the further more topics about telephone networks. What are the associated subscriber looping system? What are the associated telephonic networks for telephone switching 
that we will discuss in the upcoming session. Thank you for watching this session.